Yes, FTR, Dave. FTR that, and Jay White and Juice Robinson. I thought that was the best American tag team match ever on television. I think there, there's, there, there are pay-per-view matches that are comparable, but as far as on regular television, I, you know, and I, I mean, to me, the best one that I ever thought was uh, Midnight Express and Fantastics, and then there's been, some, there have been a lot of matches in AEW that are on that league, too. But I think this one was a notch better. I thought this match was, um, again, one of the best matches of the year and the best tag team match of the year. And it's two straight weeks for these guys because they had an incredible match the week before. But this one, uh, 58 minutes, uh, they teased the 60. They they didn't, you know, it's, it's funny because, like, um, they started really slow. Um, because they're going 60 minutes. You can't go out there because you'll burn out the crowd. You know, I mean, in theory, you would burn out the crowd if you if you went out fast. I mean, you had to build, and they built, and they, went, they did their, their falls. Uh, you know, they split the first two falls, and then the third fall. You know, they um, it, it, it felt to me watching really in the first fall, I thought, man, these guys are going long. They're going long. And then as it went, it's like they're going 60 and then they announced at the 55-minute mark, five minutes left. And I thought, man, I think that they're I, – I, th I think they may go 60. Everyone here thinks they're going to go 60. Maybe they'll do a title change at 58. But they didn't do a title change, FTR won. Um, but I just thought this match was, um, you know, um, a classic match. And the, an interesting aspect of this match is that – they did not work a lot out before the match. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's all called in the ring, but there were things that happened. Juice Juice got there at two. The match started at six. I know that there was a they were they there was a thing of let's you know like they they started the collision with the match six o'clock um um whatever it is um Calgary time I think it was but um there were or seven um, but whatever it was. They started the match, um, well, six, it's mountain time. Um, so they started the match, and there was, you know, at, at the start of the show, there was definitely talk. And I know that they wanted to get, you know, get a little bit of time to work it out and start the match later. But I think that because of the nature of it being a two-hour show and you have to do this hour match, they just wanted to start it with it. So um, really impressive that they... You know, I mean, it would have been impressive if they worked the whole match out. It still would have been super impressive. But uh, so that was another aspect of the story. And um, it was clear from the falls. So so the finish, which I thought was really, really, really good. I mean, they done they kept doing sharpshooter spots because they're in Calgary and it's Bret Hart and everything like this. And what's funny is, is that a lot of guys are doing sharpshooters. And when the heels do it, the crowd hates them. That includes CM Punk. But when the baby faces do it, the crowd loves it. I mean, it was like this was a really loud crowd. Um, and Dax is uh, doing them, but he his his knee goes out or, or gets tired or whatever it is. So he takes the brace off of his knee so he can actually bend the guy. He has more. So, so the idea is, is that he he can risked, sit deeper on it without the brace on. He can sit deeper on it without the brace on, and when he did that, Juice Robinson tapped out at fifty-eight minutes, and um, I thought, you know, I mean, what a what an in, I mean, what an incredible match. I had it uh, half spoiled because uh, I just did, had because I, I watched the uh, West Coast, so I didn't know what was going on. But then I got a, a text about my God, they went sixty. And so I thought that, you know, I started watching it, so I knew they went 60, but I thought they were going to go to a draw. So I didn't know it ended at 58. I think most people, I think most people, I think most people expected a draw um, once it got to about the 50-minute But I, and what I was going in thinking it was already a draw because I thought yeah. it had been spoiled for me. And so uh, first, first falls 20 minutes, and then second falls another 20 minutes. And then, uh, you know, they're doing the last fall, and, and I'm listening to the five-minute call, and I'm like, God damn, what a great match. Too bad it's going to a draw. And then they did the finish, and I got saw finish, and yeah, it was fantastic. The uh, Bullet Club won the first fall, yeah, first and then fall uh, 19, FTR the won the is... second and third, both second pinning ball. Juice. By the way, they did not pin right, Jay right. White. They protect, they're protecting Jay for bigger things. Absolutely. Yes, so yes. Uh, as they should. But I, yeah, I, I, um, 
Yeah. The second fall of this match, I mean, the, the whole match was great, but, like, the second fall was just the greatest fall because this was the fall where, like, FTR is hitting every move under the sun on Jay White. And since, you know, Bullet Club won the first fall, you know, oh, they're, they're, the crowd's biting on every single one of them because, ah, they got to even it up. And so, you know, they hit this spot, and Jay White kicks out, they go crazy. And then they hit this spot, and it's like, that's got to be it, and Jay White kicks out, they go crazy. And uh, then they finally do the tag, and then the switcheroo, and then uh, Juice hits the ring. It's actually, a, they do a double drop down. He jumps over twice. They both stand up. Boom, he gets hit with this thing. That finish was, uh, that, that, that fall was, was so fantastic. And the rest of the match was great. I mean, the first fall was a little bit slow until they, they kind of got going. And then, you know, they were super into the third fall, obviously, and as they, they kept was great going for the third fall, yeah. yeah, further and further, like, are they going to do a finish? Are they going to go to a draw? But, yeah, that match was absolutely fantastic. And, uh, of course, then, you know, they had to finish another hour and then a third hour of, of Battle of the Belts. And in the Battle of the Belts show— And then they did—and then in the building, they had already done a bunch of Ring of Honor before the show started. So the show started at 6 o'clock— uh, mountain time. So, so the show they probably start the show about five. I'm going to say five fifteen ish. So they're they're so so they go through there. Then you get three hours. Then they came back with more Ring of Honor. So sure. it is the they had mentioned this is the first three hour live show in the history of AEW, and um, you know it was a unique circumstance. Well, the to, point my it. point that I was making was because because you had the the hour long match. And then you had the two uh, tournament matches. And then, you know, tournament. they go into that third hour starting at 10 of AEW. And then about halfway through, they lost the satellite signal if you were watching live. And so yes. I think with with the third hour and the satellite going out and people probably tuning out because of that, I don't think that Battle of the Belts is doing very well. I do not see that doing a good number. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm sure that it's way down from the, from the first two hours, you know, and it is 10 to 11, but it's 10 to 11 on a Saturday night is not nearly as bad as 10 to 11 on a, on a Monday night. Well, it is when you lose the feed. That was only a couple minutes. I mean, it, it hurt, but I mean, like they did a bunch of commercials, so I knew that they had lost the feed. I mean, they just went out right in the middle and then they actually put on, and this, this is probably just from, uh, the people in uh, at, at uh, TBS, or actually TNT, people at TNT probably just, they put on a match from last week with the Julia Hart match, and it was on for maybe 30 seconds, and all of a sudden they come back to Ian and um, Nigel McGuinness, and so there was, there was a um, storm in Calgary, which put them down, and it really was, I, I don't know, maybe five minutes tops, but they missed the finish of the Ty of Valkyrie, Tony Storm match, so what happened... I actually, like, uh, I don't even know what they knew. I presume that they knew everything. Um, but, I well, mean... Well, they must when, have known because when they came back, the announcers were talking about it. Well, no, they... they, they, they but I don't know that they knew when it went out, is I what see. I'm saying. Is what I'm saying. I mean, I, they, may, they may have, but I just know that, that I... Um, actually, if they were watching the monitor, they probably knew, would be my guess. Yeah, I just know that I, uh, I you know, um, sent a message to Tony Khan, and I go, you've got to tell... Because remember when they came back, they didn't tell people the finish. I think that they thought that people knew the finish. I go, you've, they came back, and they said, we were doing this match, and they went to the next thing. And I said, you've got to tell the people who won that match, because we don't know. And if you get a chance, you should put the finish on, which they did end up putting the finish on right at the end of the show. So the finish was Ruby Soho hitting Taya with a foreign object and Tony Storm beating her with a pile driver. So, um, and this was apparently only the the live feed because I watched on the West Coast feed and I saw everything. So did you? Yes, I saw. I didn't even know what happened until later because the announcers are talking about how we're sorry for those of you that missed the uh, end of the match. It'll be airing on the uh, the you know the they said, they, the, they the said, app or they said, whatever. They said they're going to put it on the app and then they yeah. actually put it on the show. Yeah. Well, I saw the whole match, so I didn't miss anything. I didn't even know what happened. So yeah. The show just went on as, as normal for for me. I didn't know that it was on, because I watched the live feed. Which, which actually, which, by the way, tells normally you... normally I wouldn't be, wouldn't be doing. Well, that tells you actually, now that I think about it, the announcer probably didn't know, because I didn't know any better as I was watching the match. They yeah. just, uh, they were just calling the match. Well, when they came yeah. back, they, they knew power was out, but I don't think they knew that people didn't see the finish. Or if they, because they didn't, like, come back and go... Oh, you know, um, they didn't come back. They didn't tell you the finish until a little bit later. And then they came and, and realized, oh, for those of you who didn't know, Tony Storm retained her championship. 
And then later, they, you know, yeah, as I said, they, they did post the clip of the, of the finish of the match. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.